So I totally expect that I'm going to get quite a few negative comments on this video because the reason that I crashed my Air 2S is not what I thought it was. And ultimately, bottom line, it comes down to stupidity. So I know that some of you are going to tell me that, but I also wanted to share this video. I hesitated whether to do this or not because of that reason, but I think it's really important to share this information because it's something that not a lot of drone pilots talk about. I haven't seen anyone talk about it on YouTube and it's something that I think had a lot to do with this crash. So basically one of the sections on the part 107 exam for the FAA has to do with, it's under drone flight operations, I think, and it's called hazardous attitudes. Now I had a few of those questions on my exam and honestly I passed them off as fluff and a waste of my time because we all know the most important things on that exam are how to read a sectional chart. So I never paid really much attention to those little extra fluffy things. But one of the hazardous attitudes that they mention is called invulnerability. And it's a feeling that many remote pilots can develop over time as they gain experience because they kind of develop an attitude of, it could never happen to me. I'm very skilled at flying, so that's not gonna happen. That only happens to new pilots. So let's talk about the real reason that I crashed my DJI Air 2S into the lake a couple of weeks ago. Hey, welcome to 51 Drones, everyone. My name is Russ. Thank you for coming back. And if this is your first time here, I hope that I can earn your desire to click on that subscribe button. So a couple of weeks ago now, it's coming up on two weeks, I crashed my DJI Air 2S into the lake. And that day I thought I had figured out what had happened and I made a video about it to possibly help someone else avoid the same disaster that I had. Well, after figuring out how to download and study the flight logs from my iPhone, it turns out that the crash did not occur for the reason that I thought it did. So in this video, what I wanna show you is, I'm gonna show you how to download and view your flight logs because I think that's really important to know how to do that. Also, I'm gonna answer some of the questions, some of the many common questions that some of you asked in that video. And then finally, I'm gonna go through my flight logs and you can see exactly what happened. Now, first of all, I do wanna say a great big thank you to the folks over at mavicpilots.com. It's an online forum for all sorts of DJI drones, mostly Mavic related drones, but there's just about everything on there. But a few guys over there helped educate me on how to download the flight logs from my iPhone and then upload it and be able to interpret it. Now it's the first time that I ever did that and I thought it would be very difficult, but it's not. It's super, super easy. Now, if you haven't seen that video that I made a couple of weeks ago, go ahead and watch it. I'll put it right up here. But just a really quick review, we were out on family vacation on Lake Sakakawea in North Dakota and I was flying my Air 2S. I was capturing some boat footage. Uh, my family was out tubing and I wanted to get some really cool dynamic footage. And what happened is I got my drone out a little bit too far. I lost line of sight, plus I lost clear view on my iPhone because it was almost 100 degrees and it got really hot. And so when, when that happens, the iPhone goes dark. So when that happened, I attempted to fly my drone closer so I could regain line of sight. And in that process, it hit the water and right now it's sitting in 91 feet of water. It happened, you guys, it happened in the blink of an eye. It felt like it was a split second. Now in that video that I made that day, I thought that what happened was I did not go through my checklist. I didn't turn off my downward sensors. But after a couple of days, after I posted that video, I'm watching, I'm going, you know what? I wasn't flying my Mavic 2 Pro. I was flying my Air 2S, which uses the DJI Fly app. And with the DJI Fly app, you can't disable your downward sensors. They're on all of the time. You can't turn them off. So even if I did remember to do my checklist that day and I did remember to turn off my sensors, I couldn't have. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna answer some of the questions that you guys had in the comment section of that video. Now, the number one question by far was why didn't you hit the return to home button when you lost line of sight? Well, the reason is I only use the return to home button when I feel like all is lost. Like when I have determined that there is imminent danger to my drone or anything around the drone and I don't know where it is for an extended period of time. Now that has only happened to me a couple of times where I've had to hit that return to home button. In this case, I had no concern for my drone. I had no concern for anything around it because I was out in open water and there was nothing around me, nothing near me, and I had only lost line of sight for just a few seconds. So there was no alarm at the time. I had visual line of sight right up until a couple of seconds before the crash happened. So all I had to do was bring it a little bit closer so I could regain line of sight. Another question that many of you asked is, can you please share 
your pre-flight checklist with me. Now, I'm not going to share that here. I'll go through it real briefly, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to post it on my Patreon page, and I'll make it public so you don't have to pay for it or anything like that. You can go ahead and view it. You can copy and paste and use that if you want to. So I'll put a link for that down in the video description. However you do your pre-flight, I just recommend that you take a couple of minutes and ensure that you both you and your drone are ready to fly safely and efficiently. Now mine is very simple, but it covers the most important things. First of all, because I am a part 107 pilot and most videos that I record with my drone, I might be using on my YouTube channel. So I record the date and the time of each flight, the location, the purpose of the flight or the flights. I write down my Lance authorization number if I have one. And then any other important information about all of that, you know, information that someone may ask for if anything bad were to happen. Next thing I do is I inspect the drone and all of its components. I check the props for any nicks or cuts or anything like that that's gonna affect their performance. I make sure that my prop arms are firm and tight. <laughs> firm and tight. And then I turn on the drone. When I turn it on, I make sure that the gimbal functions normally during startup, and then I evaluate the software to make sure that there are no warnings. I check the battery health, then I go through the safety tab, disabling the sensors if I'm flying my Mavic 2 Pro over water. Then I set my camera settings. Then I take one last look around the vicinity. I make sure that everything is safe. I document that and then I launch the drone. There's really no right or wrong way to do a checklist, you guys, but basically two important things. You wanna make sure that the drone is functioning normally and safely, and you wanna address any warnings that may pop up in the software. Another comment that came up a lot was, you know, people were telling me your altitude is from your launch point, not from the point of the drone to the surface. And yes, I know that very well. And people were thinking maybe you were lower than you thought, but no, I launched right from shore, next to the water, right next to the water. So the altitude that was showing on the app should have been very close to the altitude above the water because water, of course, stays level, except for maybe a few waves that may occur, but there were barely any waves this day. So the altitude was right on, at least I thought it was. Another question is, did you calibrate your compass and your IMU before you took off? And no, I only do those things when the app tells me to, or if my drone is acting erratically like if it's not responding to the sticks properly or whatever i will calibrate the imu even though it doesn't tell me but for the most part i only do those things when the software tells me to and neither of those things had anything to do with this event but after viewing the logs you can let me know what you think in the comments oh what's this this right here well i'm glad you asked this is the ecoflow delta max and they are sponsoring this video now EcoFlow just announced a Kickstarter campaign and they're releasing a whole bunch of amazing new products. Two of those products are the Delta Max and the Delta Pro. Now the Delta Max has over 2000 watt hours, plus it can power anything up to 3400 watts. That means that anything in your home, this thing can power it. Now this is a little more portable than the Delta Pro. The Delta Pro is like the ultimate home battery backup system, but the Delta Max, it's a little more portable. You can take this to the campsite, to your bug out house, and you can also use it for emergency purposes at your home during power outages. One other really cool thing that EcoFlow just announced is their brand new app. So you can control and monitor the Delta Max and the Delta Pro on your phone. And I think that is incredibly useful. So if you've been considering getting into portable power at all, there's no better time right now, especially with this Kickstarter campaign. You can get the Delta Max for $400 off and the Delta Pro for $600 off. So go ahead and click on the Kickstarter link in the video description and see everything that EcoFlow is releasing, including a solar tracker, like it tracks the sun. It's a solar panel that tracks the sun. Some really cool stuff coming from EcoFlow. Thank you EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. So let's head inside right now and check out the flight log and see exactly what happened with my Air 2S. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at my flight log and I actually didn't know how easy it was to get these, but on an iPhone, you simply open up your files folder and then you click on my iPhone and then you open the DJI fly folder and then click on the flight records folder and then choose the flight that you want to interpret. In my case, it's the very last flight. You're gonna go ahead and open that and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna share that to your email or to your iCloud folder. Now, if, also if you have AirDrop and a Mac, you can just share it that way. And if you have an Android phone, it is a little bit different. There's actually a tutorial on how to do that right here. It says locating your flight logs. And then if you scroll down, it says for Android mobile devices. Uh, it's on the phantomhelp.com 
website. I'm going to put a link for this in the video description. This is the website that you're going to use to interpret your log. Now, also what I want to do is I'm going to challenge one of my peers, you know, like daily droning or air photography to put out a tutorial for how to download and view your flight logs from an Android. What I did is I sent it to my email and then I saved it on my computer. And then I went to this website. It's phantomhelp.com slash log viewer slash upload. I know, you know, this is not a phantom, but this is the website that you go to. And then what you do is you click on right here, you click on I'm not a robot, you browse and you look for that flight record, you go ahead and click on it and open it. And then you're going to click on upload log. And then it does take a few seconds, but uh, it's going to show us the complete log here. Okay, now what you can do is you can copy the URL right here, and then you can email that to yourself. You can save that somewhere. You can share it on a forum like mavicpilots.com so some of the experts can evaluate it and see exactly what happened. But that's pretty nice. So it's just to have an extra copy so you don't have to come back to this website every time you want to view that log. So you can see here, it gives you a pretty detailed information about every tenth of a second, every two tenths or every tenth of a second. But it shows you the location, the map, shows you your stick inputs, shows the attitude indicator. So very valuable stuff here. So let's go ahead and scroll down here. You can see it shows what mode you're in, satellites, the altitudes, um, your speed at the time, your distance from home, the battery life, the battery voltage and health. So really great stuff here. So I'm going to go ahead and just scroll all the way down and just show you like, it's pretty cool. You just click on one of these lines and it shows you where you are at that time. It shows you your stick inputs at that time. So I'm moving forward at full speed and I'm going to the uh, left a little bit. And then if you just keep on scrolling down, you can see that it'll move through the record. So very, very cool to have that. So we're going to scroll all the way down here to when we started to have some trouble. So you can see about right here, I was flying at 17 feet at 1 minute and 28.1 seconds, okay? So let's go to right here. Where should we go? Let's go right here. 1 minute 27.8. All right, I got, I'm flying straight ahead. I got no input on the left stick, but for some reason, right here, look what I did. Down and to the left. Why is it down? I have no idea. I'm assuming maybe I was just trying to turn to the left a little bit but for some reason I was pushing down on the stick and I didn't even realize it. So you'll see right there, that's when the um, the altitude starts to decrease. Let's just jump ahead here to one minute and 30 seconds. It shows you the position here. I'm still pushing down. I'm going 22 miles per hour, so it's going down very quickly. Um, I don't know. I just don't know what was going on here. Uh, and then you go to uh, right here, one minute and 30.2 seconds. And you can see right here, that's, I'm assuming that's when the obstacle avoidance went off and I let go of both of the sticks. And I'm at 8.9 feet altitude, VPS altitude. So that means from the drone to the water is 8.9 feet. Same thing here, 0.1 seconds later. And then look right here, 30.4, one minute, 30.4 seconds, it goes to 0.7 feet. So... Yes, I was I was pushing down. I, I don't know why. But what happened here? I went from 8.9 feet to 0.7 feet. So that's like 70 feet per second drop. I don't get it. I don't get this right here. Like this means that it this tells me that it hit the water when the altitude was at 8.9 feet. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't sound like it was functioning correctly because before it was dropping not that fast. But then here... So somebody please explain this to me. And then you can see right here at the very bottom, the very last input was me trying to push up on the stick when I realized what had happened and it was way too late. So, and that's, that must be when it hit the water and it must have spun around because you can see, you know, if you look right here. So at this point, you know, I'm facing Northwest. Now I'm facing Northeast and now it's facing Southeast. So this must be, no, this must be, this has got to be when it hit the water right here. But why did this altitude change so much? So, but anyway, that, that just shows me that, yes, this was 100% uh, pilot error. Like I was pushing down, I was decreasing my own altitude. I just wasn't seeing it on the screen and I wasn't seeing it because I didn't have visual line of sight at that time. And you can see how fast this happens. You guys, this took less than two seconds 
for this whole thing to happen, you know, we're talking right here, one, uh, 27.9 to 30.3 seconds. So things happen real fast. So we really need to be vigilant. So anyway, it makes me feel a little better to know that it was my fault because it gives me a little bit of closure, but it still sucks that I did it myself. All right, so what is my deduction from all of this, this event right here? My attitude of invulnerability is what crashed my drone into the lake. Nobody talks about that, but it really is a thing. I think pretty much I just got too cocky, especially that day I was getting really good at flying manually around that boat, and I was feeling really good, and I was feeling really confident about my skills. But when that happens, you're not really focused on what you're doing. Like I was trying to fly in auto mode, like inside my brain, I was on auto mode and I wasn't paying full attention to the actions that I was doing. Like, why was I pulling back on the left stick? You know, decreasing my altitude as I was flying forward. I have no idea. Like I've done that when I'm playing flight simulator, but I haven't played that game for a long time. Maybe my thumb was resting on the stick and I didn't realize it or I didn't notice it when I was flying forward because my screen was dark and I couldn't see my stats. Normally when I'm flying, I'm checking those stats like every three or four seconds. I couldn't see that it was decreasing in altitude. And the reason I couldn't see that is because Tim Cook does not know how to design a phone that can't handle the heat. Android definitely kicks butt in that category. Maybe I was trying to increase my altitude, but the summer heat confused my brain and I was pushing down on the stick instead of up. I really have no idea. Now I still think this incident has a little bit of something to do with those downward sensors, but either way, this crash was absolutely due to pilot error and my attitude of invulnerability. Yes, it was a little combination of the mobile device overheating and maybe a little bit of VPS malfunction, but ultimately my fault. What happened to my Air 2S in those last moments of his life, we will never truly know, but I do feel a little bit better knowing that it was mostly my fault. Having that understanding does bring closure to me and I think that's really important. You guys, this can happen to anyone at any time, even for experienced pilots. And so I think we should always be overly obsessive about drone safety. It's so easy to become lax, especially as you become more confident in your flying skills. Now confidence can be useful when you're flying, piloting a UAV, but it must be combined with the understanding that anything can happen at any time to anyone. Thank goodness that this happened over a safe place and there was no damage to life or property, except for my drone. But for that, I am truly thankful. What do I want you to take away from this? I want you to not be afraid to fly over water, but respect it when you do. Understand that when you're flying over water and your drone crashes, more than likely you are never gonna see that drone again. But the payoff, the payoff of flying over water is worth it, you guys. It's worth it because the exhilaration that comes with it and then the footage that you can capture by doing that is so awesome there's nothing better so don't be afraid to do it now if i was able to improve your knowledge in some way today please click on that thumbs up button also click on that subscribe button i want to see how close we can get to 200,000 subscribers before the end of 2021 thank you for watching the entire video today you guys that means so much to me i can't even describe to you how much that means have a great day and as always fly safe and fly smart i bet you're wondering what's the deal what's the deal with that cup <laughs> I know some of you are like, you're just looking like, what? what is up with this cup? This is from Reptile Gardens a few years ago, and it's my camping coffee cup. I take it camping. And uh, I thought it'd be fun to put it in the video. <laughs> Isn't it great? I don't use it too often because it's freaking heavy, especially when it's full. But uh, yeah, that's my alligator cup. <laughs>